Brandon McMahon released the album As the Road Unfolds earlier this year, but he already has new music out, a single that is not on the album called New Country Morning. So I'm going to ask him all about his productivity and New Country Mornings. Hi, Brendan. Hello. How are you, Sophie? I'm very well, thank you. You've been so enjoying this song because it's just this lovely feeling to it. It's a great song to release as we're coming into summer, which may or may not have been intentional. But I thought I'd start by asking you about how, because this song really evokes the feeling of a country morning at the start of a, of a day. Because mm, you can really yeah, hear yeah. that and feel it in the song. So I'm wondering if there was a particular country morning that inspired it. Oh, I think it's lots of country mornings that have inspired it when I've been camping. And I think, um, you know, Gimpy is, is one of the things that I really enjoy doing and playing and we camp at Gimpy. Um, I've camped with my kids, I've camped with my wife, a bunch of mates. We went, you know, to various different places around Australia camping and I think it's just a, it's a wonderful experience to unzip the swag in the morning and just, you know, be in the fresh air. So, yeah. Cool. Actually, now that you said camping, I was like, yeah, I can totally hear how that's part of it because you really feel in the song that you almost one with nature. And I guess with camping, you are stumbling out onto the grass. <laughs> well, sometimes there's no grass, Sophie. Right. Sometimes it's just red dirt. And that's okay too. <laughs> as long as there's no snakes or spiders, I'm good with that. Well, and the red dirt tends to get into everything if that's where you are. But uh, do you remember the very first time you camped? Um, yeah, oh, look, it was a, as a kid, as a kid at home in the backyard with a mate of mine, we pitched a tent up there and we decided we we're going to camp outside. And I'm pretty sure it started raining and I'm pretty sure we went back inside and slept most of the night inside. So that was the first experience of camping, but that was many, many years ago. It's gotten better since then. Yeah, right. And obviously, yes, you've had a lot of experience since then. Um, and it's also a song that's about celebrating country environments. So what in particular do you like about being in the country? Well, I'm a country boy. I grew up, I was born in a town of 900 people and then grew up in a town of about 2000. So it's just who I am. And I, you know, it's such an easy life. You know, you look back at when you get a bit older, you look back and you reflect on how good life was living in a small country town where you were so free and easy to go and do anything you liked and there was no threats or, you know, it was just, just easy. As, as long as you were home by tea time when it got dark, mum was happy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, growing up in the country, how much do you think that's influenced you uh, in terms of the subjects you like to write songs about? A lot. <laughs> Short answer, a lot. Yeah. And, and probably more so since COVID, believe it or not, because in COVID... Uh, we got obviously we got locked down in Victoria pretty harshly, and um, I started writing songs that were reflective of of youth, and and experiences and adolescence, and even you know in my early twenties things that I used to do, right. and experiences I had. So I, I think I've reflected more on it in the last couple of albums than I have ever before. And going forward, you know, as as you said, I, I'm writing again. I'm I've, released album six i'm now writing for album seven and releasing for album seven right. and i think there'll be a lot of stuff on those albums that are influenced by it so because that's a that is a very quick pace that you're on at the moment because and also your recent albums have been fairly close together so you're obviously very productive is it because of COVID that you have now this brace of songs that you're ready to record i mean how long ago did you record did you write and record this one for example uh this was this has only just been finished so right. um i i would have written this song this year we would have gone into the studio to to track i think we tracked a dozen new songs okay. and we've been working on them since about april so it's it's pretty new right i suppose that's an upside of a very punishing lockdown if we're if we're trying to look for lock upsides and i think we probably are still <laughs> I was scarred for life. <laughs> In Victoria, yeah, I, I completely understand that you would be, yeah. Yeah. Look, I, uh, I, yeah, that's part of it. But also I had about a 10-year gap from playing music and writing music. And I think you know, there's a there's a build-up in the back of my head. There's somewhere of lots of songs that I, I need to flush out. And um, I, I think it's just part, it's part, of, part of COVID. Part of the fact that I had a break and I've had so many ideas that have just been locked away that I haven't been able to flush out and, and record. So I think there's a couple of things there that, that, you know, make me so productive at the moment. 
when you're carrying those ideas around, does it feel like they're sort of congested in your head? And then once you write the songs, you feel like, oh, okay, that's out. Or are you someone who keeps notes as soon as you have an idea so you can get them out of your head? Absolutely take notes. Absolutely. Right. Every time a song idea comes to me, I, um, I'll record it into my phone or if I'm in my studio, I'll record it into software. I just don't like to let any ideas slip by because of two reasons. One, because they might be good. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I feel you've got to flush out all the ideas that possibly aren't going to be great songs to make room for the songs that you are going to record. So I would have, last count, I had over a thousand song ideas, just little mm -hmm. bits and bobs locked away um, that I, you know, I may go back to at any point in time, but um, I haven't need to at this point. But I, I think it's a process where you just, you, you need to get everything out. So the ideas keep flowing and the good ideas Mm. Um, come to the surface. I think it's a trap sometimes for uh, songwriters or any kind of writers or creators when they're at the start of their creative practice that they think that every idea must be a precious one and they have to do something with it. But someone like you who's written so many songs, you know by now, you know, ideas are everywhere. As you said, you've got a, a thousand ideas noted down and you just, it is a really good idea to flush out the ones that won't work. It seems like that's a practice you've developed over a period of time yeah yeah and I, it's funny I've got one song that I'm working on in the studio at the moment that I actually wrote a song uh, probably two or three years ago well, probably more than that four years ago and I started to record it and it's probably one of the worst songs I've ever recorded this is just oh. an example and, and so I just forgot it listened to it and I thought no nah, that is bad it is really bad and I was going through old lyrics because I always keep the old lyrical ideas and whatever and and uh, I was going through some word documents and I found that song and I looked at the title and I thought that's a really cool title for a song it's a pity it was such a bad song so I rewrote the song into something oh. completely different and I'm now really happy with it so you just never know what's going to happen and what's going to take shape even from a you know a bad start to to you know reworking something as you go down you know months years later yeah I'm interested when you said it, you listened back to the song and it was really bad while you were recording it did it feel like it wasn't the right thing but you pushed through thinking oh I'm here in the studio I better do it yep okay <laughs> yep because I record most of my guide tracks before I go into the studio where I record most of my stuff I record all my guide tracks on my vocals and my guitars and whatever and and I didn't dare unleash it into the proper studio because it would have been right. embarrassing right. <laughs> and and the session musos I played with would have looked at me a bit strange and thought oh maybe he's hit his peak now and <laughs> he's got no more <laughs> ideas <laughs> so, so I didn't take it in there so I guess it's also a lesson in trusting your instinct because if it was feeling a bit off when you were just even laying down the guide tracks, it's like, that's off. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, I'm six albums into this writing and, and releasing and I think the first two or three albums, you find your way mm -hmm. and then by the time you get to the fourth album, well, for me personally, by the time I got to my fourth album, I thought, oh, actually, I'm starting to get a direction here and I'm starting to to exhaust all of the built up song ideas that I've had for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to focus on actually writing and recording in a particular style and a particular direction. Right. And I think that's, that gets stronger and stronger as you go. And uh, I truly believe that the last album and this next one, are uh, probably not as much of a, um, I was going to use the term dog's breakfast, but that doesn't sound very good, does it? Not, not so much eclective releases. They're a little less eclective. They're softly eclectic. Right. Right. There you go. Well, certainly on this song, New Country Morning, um, there's a feeling of freedom around it, which is to do with the subject matter, but also I think in how you've recorded it. Um, and it's also a song about travelling. There's a line in it, I don't know where this road will take me next, which could be, you know, a metaphor for the creative life. Um, yep. But in a literal sense, I'm wondering in terms of roads and where they take you, have you had any unexpected small town stops when you've been on the road as a musician? Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> what was the best one? <laughs> oh, oh, what was the best one? Well, I, I, it, just recently in Austin, Texas, um, I, I somehow stumbled across the fact, and I think it was in a hotel. I was 
talking to a guy in the hotel and checked in and I had my guitar and the guy said, oh, are you Muso? And I said, oh, yeah. And he said, oh, I tell you what, there's a great place about 10 miles out of town in, and they do, you know, live music nearly every night. So we packed up, got an Uber out there and, and played a few songs out at the, I can't even remember where it was, but it was, it was an open air um, pub. Um, they sold lots and lots of different types of moonshine. There's a whole bunch of great musos there. And I just had a ball playing a couple of songs to people I didn't know, just ad hoc, and, you know, heard a whisper there was a gig going. So went out there. So that was pretty exciting just recently. So. And you, there you go. You did not know where that ride would take you. And no, um, no. Took you right there. so we'll put that unknown town down as one of perhaps your favorite country towns in Australia. Do you have some favorite country towns? Well, my hometown, of course, in Kapunda in South Australia. Um, I really enjoyed that. I did a, I did a gig at Lake Bolak in, um, oh, it's probably about an hour out of Geelong, just recently, a small country town. Uh, There's probably 400 people there. Um, that was really cool because, um, you know, it's somewhere I hadn't played before. It's just, you know, every, every little town is great. Yeah. <laughs> just fantastic. And I suppose having grown up in a country town, um, you would know that there's more than meets the eye with most towns. Like there are always little things going on and little bits of history and little communities and little interesting bits and pieces. Everybody knows everybody in a small town. Everybody knows everybody's business in a small town. I, I remember the, this is going back way back. Um, I, I just started a band with uh, two mates and we uh, decided that it was a really nice Saturday night. We're going to go out on the veranda of our house, my my parents' house, and take my brand new, really really loud amp out and mm-hmm. my mate's really really loud drum kit kit out, and just play on the front porch. And uh, within a half an hour, the police turned up, <laughs> <laughs> and they were about to book us for uh, disturbing the peace. And fortunately, we were only about 17 at the time and uh, we couldn't have, uh, we, were, we were juvenile still. So um, it was a pretty scary moment. But what was worse is we probably sounded really bad. Right. And that's the worst part of it. Getting booked wasn't too bad, but sounding bad sort of dented our ego. So, you know, in a small country town, those things happen. It's about to say, that's right. You, could, you had a reputation then for how you were playing at the front. <laughs> So uh, what is on your road trip playlist? My road trip playlist, oh, look, I listen, I don't have a particular playlist. I listen to everything because there's so much good music around. So I grew up with rock and I grew up with rock music and I listened to a lot of that. Bands like Van Halen and Queensryche, you know, sort of metal bands. Mm-hmm. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, I love all that sort of stuff. Then I love the folk stuff like Richard Thompson and Harry Manx. Um, love Blake Shelton and, um, you know, a whole heap of country stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and even pop, you know, I listen to pop on occasions. Very rarely will I listen to um, uh, really, really hard metal. I, you know, I, I, it's not my thing. Um, but, yeah, I, think I, I just pick random playlists. There's so many on Spotify and all those sorts of things now. I just pick a random playlist and I'll listen to anything. Okay, that's open-minded of you, I guess, because sometimes people can close themselves off to new music and just think, ah, I really just want to listen to what I know, but it sounds like you are open, as open as the road. Yeah, ex- ex- absolutely. You know, I, I spent uh, a few hours driving um, to New South Wales last week and I just put Taylor Swift on and I just thought, I really don't know much Taylor Swift music. And I listened to her old stuff right through to her new stuff. And I thought, wow, what a progression she's made. Mm -hmm. What a change she's made over, you know, not too many years in her style. So uh, that was really cool to listen to as well. Yeah. Now, I believe you would have been on the road to the Dag Sheep Station in Nundal, which is near Tamworth, because I believe you've just come back from from that. So I'm wondering how it went. That was really good. That's where I was listening to Taylor Swift, actually. Yeah, Yeah, it was really good. Uh, the Dag Sheep Station is such a wonderful place, and and when when it was a writers' retreat, so there was I think there was about twenty five or thirty songwriters there, mm-hmm. all shapes and sizes, you know, all different genres. There's no, it doesn't necessarily have to be country; it's just any any genre. And we get together for about four days, and we just 
meet new people and we just say, hey, you want to write a song? And generally, you know, it's yes, I'll write a song with you. And then we, we come up with ideas right there and then on the spot and see what develops. So it's, um, it's a really good environment. It's a really creative environment because everybody is there to just learn and, and write songs. So I've not experienced anything um, like that, a place like that before. So it's my second time there and, you know, I'll continue to go to the day because I wrote a couple of cracker songs while I was there. So <laughs> I actually interviewed Ash Ashley Dallas last week, just after she'd come back from there. And she said, um, you know, there are some people who are there who, who don't sing or play guitar. They're, they're songwriters yeah. and it had never occurred to me before that might be the case but of course it is and that must make it interesting as well because as a performer I imagine you're listening for certain things in a song but then someone who's just purely a songwriter might bring something completely different yeah well there's there's a lady called Lola Brinton and she's um she's a mature lady I won't give away her age because that's not nice <laughs> but she's a mature lady and she's just a lyricist and she has a book full of lyrics you know, mm. just different songs, different stories. And I've written a couple of um, songs with Lola. And oh. the, the other thing she has is she has a, a whole heap of pages of one-liners. And sometimes when you're writing a song, you're just looking for that one line, you yeah. know, to finish off a song. And I've said to Lola a couple of times, you know, if you ever want to give you this book or those one-liners away, I'll <laughs> gladly take them because I'll write songs with them. So, And there was a couple of lyricists there this time. And we've had po uh, just bush poets there that don't mm -hmm. actually play before. And and uh, someone will grab a guitar and, and put music to their bush poetry. So it's just a really creative environment. There was a, a, a theatrical lady there this time. She was just absolutely fantastic. Wow. And she, she just spent her time in theatre and the animation on her face was incredible when she performed and, you know, she was nervous about performing and everybody just loved it. So it's a, it's a really eclectic mix of musicians that go to these things and, and meet and write and it's great to write with people who, who don't necessarily play your style of music because you never know what happens. Yeah, it does sound magical, I have to say. Every time I've interviewed someone and they've been there, they just, you know, their eyes light up and there's invariably a song they've recorded that's come out of it. So it's um, it's been, it's made a massive contribution, I think, to Australian music. Oh, absolutely. And, and look, two, two songs on the next album will be co-writes from the oh. DAG and two songs on the album after that <laughs> will be co-writes from the DAG. And who knows what happens next year when I go back to the DAG and write some more songs. So you've already planned two albums ahead, obviously. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, look, I started out, I was going to record six acoustic songs back in 2014, went into the studio and all of a sudden, I'm, um, you know, three quarter of the way through my seventh album. So um, yes, I have all the songs for the eighth album, uh, plus another, probably enough to do another two albums after that. Right. Um, but, you know, who knows what I'll write in between times. So uh, while I'm writing and while I think the calibre of the songs is good enough to put out, I'll continue to write and I'll continue to record and release. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, and being on the road in New South Wales, uh, if you continue past the DAG, of course, you'll get to Tamworth and there will mm -hmm. be the Tamworth Country Music Festival there in January. Will you be back on the road to Tamworth in January? Absolutely. My first gig is on the... Friday that it starts and I think my last gig is on the Saturday that it finishes oh, right. and I've got a bunch in between I think I've got 10 gigs in Tamworth at this point right. so yes definitely uh that's that is a lot particularly when being in Tamworth as a performer uh, or as an artist means you're invariably running around seeing other people play and catching up with people so how do you look after your voice to make sure you can get to that Saturday gig <laughs> yeah yeah you just go easy uh, look, most of the gigs in Tamworth are between 30 and 60 minute gigs. So they're not too draining on the voice. Um, and a lot of them are acoustic gigs as well. So you can just pull back a little bit and just mind your voice. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, by the end of it, I've no doubt there'll be some uh, some rasp in my <laughs> voice that wasn't there at the start. But you know, it's good fun performing. Tamworth is such a great place and, you know, people go there to listen to music and, and, and the people there are just great, you know, there to hear music. They're not there for anything else. So yeah. it's a really good environment.
It certainly is. Well, I hope you'll put your own song, New Country Morning, on your road trip playlist when you head to Tabworth because it certainly deserves to be on anyone's road trip playlist. Brendan, it was great to talk to you about it and have fun in Tamworth. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sophie.